Hey, m 0 Nation, Jason here, alongside the absolute love of my life, Magda. Day 10 of the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge, and you shared with me, we were on a long cross country, and you shared with me a story that oddly enough, and I love telling stories, it's a story I have never told. Maybe it's the embarrassment of it, maybe it's my poor decision making, but I don't know if you want to embarrass me or just it's upon your heart to share it. I don't know what it is, but you kind of want to share the story. So, sweetheart, the floor is yours. Everyone already knows and loves you. So, oh, thank you, baby. Let's hear it. Yeah. So basically, uh, all the all the videos you see are very polished, yes. and uh, you should show. You know, Coach Ray edits all the videos, and all the little behind the scenes stuff that happens. That's where the lessons are learned. Yes. Not, we don't share it much. And I say, what a great opportunity to, to share this wonderful story that it turned out good, but it could have been a little... We were building the start of an NTSB report. That's right. There's so, no doubt. So take it away. When was it? Two years ago? It was at least, least two years ago. Yes. We wanted to go to the uh, boat show in, in Miami, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was on a weekend. You wanted to take the Friday off? I did. Yeah. For a few minutes, I took a Friday off. Any workaholics out there, Workaholics Unite? I, I took Friday off on my calendar, but I still ended up in the office. Yeah. So we were at the house and we were packing and getting ready to leave. You got a phone call from the office yes. that you had to go. So he, he went to the office and actually we all kind of packed in even more rush, got in the car, drove to the office, uh, had to sign a few things. There was sign a few things. There's always fires to put out, yes. you know, whatever it may be. And then we had, when we gone that weekend, we had to run an errand to the bank as well, oh, if you recall. Oh, yeah. You want to tell them what happened to the bank? I don't know. Any general contractors out there that build banks, I have a problem with drive throughs they're just, they're just too tiny. So I pull in the drive through I were already running a little bit behind because I had to stop at the office to sign some stuff and put out some fires. I had to drop off a check at the bank. The drive through was way too small. I, let's just say I made the turn out of the drive through a little bit too early and I didn't scratch the rim. I gouged the rim. At this point, this was a newish car to us. Now it's older yeah. and it still has the same gouge in the rim. And I, it was one of those where you did it and you heard it and you're like, just keep driving. <laughs> Like a boss. Thank, Let me tell you. <laughs> thank you. Um, the scar is still there on the on the rim. Yes. And, but again, you're putting yourself in that mindset. Like everyone's done that, by the way, at a parking lot or a drive-through, and you're you're already rushed. Now you just gouge the snot out of your nice new to you car rim. Yes. You're not feeling so good about in things. In front of people. Exactly. Right. Exactly. How many? I think it was four of us in the car. Yes. And uh, yeah. Anyways. Drove to the to the airport and the story continues. Mm -hmm. I believe the uh, aircraft was, was outside. Yep. So um, we we're flying the Technum. The Technum was outside at the time, yes. and they were doing all this construction at the Ocala airport, and it was like in demo phase. So the aircraft was just covered in dust yeah. and like these weird black spot. Like just it was absolutely filthy. On top of that, I'm doing the pre-flight. There's no fuel, like yeah. literally, I mean, it, it, not enough to make it to Miami. You know me, the only time you have too much fuel is when you're on fire. There's not enough fuel on there. So I'm out there trying to pre-flight, clean the airplane, coordinate fuel to come on out there between all this stuff. Yeah, and at the same time, somebody hit the step you wanna, yeah. and you started bleeding. One so. of our passengers we were flying with and not like, you know, not into aviation, just the Technum landing gear is weird. Hit. I guess it was the landing gear door. Their whole shin is bleeding. I'm cleaning the airplane, pre-flight in the airplane, trying to fuel the airplane. Someone is bleeding. And I gouge the rim. We're running late. I just want to get there. Yeah. And we wanted to be there before lunch for no reason. It, we, we set this limiting belief yes. that, oh, we have to be down there for lunch or before lunch. And it's just unnecessary added pressure. Absolutely. On, on top of that, from doing the weight and balance, we were at max gross weight with the, yes. with the four of us. The Technum can, can take, take a, a decent useful load, yes. but we're at max gross weight with that. And 
All these things are compounding. Can you see the chain of events of an accident really kind of building here? Being rushed, gouging the rim, so that's a negative mindset right there. Passenger bleeding, dirty airplane from all the construction, no fuel, rushed pre-flight, feel like we have to be there. It's a boat show, for gonna say. No one's yeah. expecting us no. to be there, just something we wanted to do. Yeah. You felt all this tension. I certainly felt my blood pressure was rising as we're doing this. I knew you were getting up there when J when Jason gets quiet, something is not right. <laughs> <laughs> good. Take note. Good yeah. point. Good point. <laughs> yes. Good point. Or I'm tired, but yes. Good. Yeah. Or hungry. Or hungry. Good point. Yeah. So we all hop in the airplane. We get our seat belts yeah. on. Now, mind you, the Technum, great airplane, but it is like a greenhouse. Ooh. You yeah. have to shut all the doors because the engines are rotating next to you. Uh, so you have to shut all the doors. Four people, breathing, hot. You just want to get there. And I go to start the first engine. And? Nobody was there. Nothing. nothing. Absol absolutely nothing. It was like, it was just turning. The starter was working, <laughs> yeah. but she sure wasn't firing. Nope. Gave it a break. Tried the other engine. Nothing. I mean, again, yeah. the starter was working. Electrical system was working. I couldn't get either engine to start. I am throwing so much fuel to this thing yeah. at this point. And I'm not thinking like, okay, we an engine fire on start. I can get four people out of the airplane. The engine's located right here. Like we're cranking, cranking, cranking. And it was actually my sweet Magda who yeah. stepped up in this case. Cause I am getting more and more, I'm sweating now. Mm -hmm. The airplane will not start. I am frustrated. I am angry. I am rushed. I am all these negative things that you that have no place yeah. in the cockpit. Yeah, I felt we had to be there. Team, this is two years ago. This isn't like 16-year-old Jason. Yes. We all make dumb decisions. We all put ourselves in those negative mindsets. And I, praise God, I have an amazing lady next to me. Please explain to them what you did. Yeah, so from my... I am not a pilot yet. And I started flying with Jason several years ago. So it's not that I have a lot of background and I don't know all the time what's happening but I know my men and I I can hear when an airplane doesn't start <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I can put the two together yes and from hearing all your NTSB reports that you explain at Aviation Mastery yes. and all the members webinars yes and in my mind I thought this sounds like the start of an NTSB report. Something we talk about so much. Yes, and it just didn't feel right. So, and he kept cranking it and cranking it. And I waited a couple, I waited a couple seconds to yes. see, let's see what he, he what decision uh, you were making, but you were just wanted to be there. Yes. And I felt like you wanted to be there for all of us. Right. And it's a, it's uh, such an external pressure. Yes. And, and I, I couldn't handle it anymore. And I said, you know what? I'm, I'm speaking up. I remember I put my hand on your shoulder. Yeah, she was in the back seat. Yes. Kind of reached over. Yep. Yes. And I said, uh, baby, apply what you teach. We don't have to be anywhere in aviation. And yeah. after I dropped the bomb, I think <laughs> it was the first time that I spoke out. Yes. And... It wasn't easy, mm -mm. but I remember you kind of took a deep breath, stopped everything and opened the door and said, we will be driving. And we didn't end up driving down there. And I still have never been to the Miami Boat Show. <laughs> That's right. Two years. So anybody wants to go to the Miami Boat Show this year after COVID, we're, we're, we're all on board. We might drive though, I'm not sure. But uh, the, the courage that it, it takes for someone to speak up. The humility, and this is not bragging on myself, I, I don't tell this to impress you, I say this to impress upon you. It's one thing for someone to speak up, but I could just said, hey, d I got this, don't worry about it. It then takes humility to say, she's right, he's right, they're right, wh whatever it may be, take a deep breath. We never have to be anywhere in aviation and that is the god honest truth so thank you for speaking up sweetheart and thank you for being uh, my co-pilot in life and in aviation and all sorts of things m nation our story probably isn't all that unique if i had to guess there are other stories out there uh, that you all have perhaps so share with us in the comments below this video 
What'd you learn from this? How can you apply this? And by the way, what stories do you have? And what parameters are you going to put in place? You know, something Magda has been very diligently working on uh, with the M0A team is this idea of a co-pilot yeah. course. More on that, I believe it'll be day 22. We'll be sharing how we work as a team in the cockpit together. Even though she is a, you know, a pre-solo student pilot, like literally, I mean, we fly a ton together. But as far as like lessons, they're few and far between. To actually yeah. go out and have a structured lesson like that but she's been in the 172 from california to florida over three days she's flown a uh, bell 206 helicopter with me from medford or to florida like we've done a lot of yeah. cool things together she couldn't log a ton of time but uh, we want to just have those structured lessons so m nation we want to read your comments below this and we read every single one of them so uh please leave us your comments on what did you learn from this how are you going to apply this? And maybe you have your own stories you want to share as well. I hope you've pre-ordered your copy of Aviation Mastery, the book, aviationmastery.com. This lady had such an impact on that, uh, on that book. Uh, she is, she is, is the author of the book, essentially. I, I, I get my face is on there, but I'm telling you, uh, she is the, the smart uh, behind so much uh, of that. So. Anyways, M Zero Nation, you are a blessing to both Magda and I, our family, this amazing M Zero A.com team. And you're a part of our family. If there's anything we can do uh, this 2021, this year, to better serve you, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you soon.